And faced with outbreaks like the Marburg virus in Angola and many others, whenever the viruses emerge in developing countries, the WHO has to rely on volunteers and NGOs to be able to eradicate them. That is the response, the international aid that many countries receive with the appearance of a new virus and with the constant presence of those already established. As Francisco Ayala recalls in his logic and philosophy classes, controlling viruses in developing countries is a question for humanity, and it is an urgent question. Of course, protecting against infections in developing countries has two purposes. One of these, let's call it human generosity and compassion, is protecting people who do not have the economic resources to protect themselves. But there is another aspect, which is that these infections could become epidemics that spread throughout the world and come to us, which in other words is saying by protecting developing countries, we are protecting ourselves. And once again, this question of the investment made against bioterrorism, against terrorism in general, if this money were to be invested in controlling infectious diseases in Africa and in other developing countries, the benefits for mankind would be higher, even for ourselves. At this very moment, there are thousands of viruses evolving. At this very moment, there are thousands of viruses crossing between species, opening up roots. These may be in Asia, or they may be in the great cradle for practically all viruses, Africa. There is no clear theory, although there are some pointers that can explain this phenomenon. Why is Africa the cradle for so many viruses? This is the question posed many times by Luis Villarreal when he's thinking, writing, and researching on how viruses change and adapt themselves to new species. Uh, my view on that is a, a lot of the capacity of agents to emerge in Africa has to do with the evolution of our own species uh, in Africa and our relatives, such as the monkeys and the African primates. There are 40 species of uh, African monkey, for example, each one of them is harboring uh, its own particular kind of viruses, usually uh, in, in apparent states. They just function as a good stepping stone uh, for agents to evolve uh, and make their way into the human population. Viruses reach this village, where there is no drinking water, but there is permanent diarrhea, malnutrition, poor health infrastructures, and illnesses such as malaria. We now have, in, in sub-Saharan Africa, a huge population of people that are immune-suppressed. And an immune-suppressed population is just a much easier stepping stone for an agent to adapt and to become capable of transmitting in a new host, such as a human. This is what happened with a virus that has already affected 25% of the population of black Africa. This is the human immunodeficiency virus. It causes AIDS, the illness suffered by Safina. She's 26 years old. Around her reigns the most absolute silence. That's what she's requested. Safina is bidding farewell to life on one day at the end of November. It is thought that the human immunodeficiency virus crossed from monkeys to humans close to this immense lake, Lake Victoria. It is one of the sources of the Nile River. Paradoxically, or perhaps with enormous significance, it is from this same environment, the cradle of mankind's evolution, that also emerged the West Nile, the Epstein Bar, the Semliki Forest, the Ebola, and the Marburg viruses. 
And the viruses from the Bunyaviridae genus, a large and diverse group of viruses that produces serious infections, were isolated barely a few kilometers from Bundigbuyo, from the village of the Association of AIDS Widows. 53 women whose determination to survive has kept them united. Today, they have an important meeting. Someone is going to call a meeting of everyone in the village. Following behind them are the children, other women, the elderly, who here in sub-Saharan Africa are no older than 47. This is the life expectation imposed by the human immunodeficiency virus. They are making for a small room, barely six meters square, which they use as headquarters. They have lost their husbands and children to AIDS. And these other widows bear the burden of the lives of more than 180 orphans. Dragging the timidity of one who is asking, and with the imperious need to ask, the AIDS widows raise their signs. A virus is killing us. Here is Safina's mother. But they are also asking for financial help. And they have no transportation, no houses, no food nor medicines for the orphans, nor so many other things. All because of a virus. But is it just the fault of a virus? Only a virus? The AIDS widows talk. We can request. The government of Spain and yours. The individuals of Spain to come to our rescue before we die. Thank you. Thank you. Threshing the earth, leaping between, species, leaping between species, hidden in nature, or laying low in our own bodies, at the same time. active and inert at the same time. Millions and millions of beings that surround us and invade us. They're everywhere. But what kind of life? A human being with a human being. An animal and a human being. An animal and a plant. Maybe two animals. Maybe two plants. They rub. They get close. In each meeting, life is transmitted. <laughs> 